1000 has been around since 1536. But after sending the motivational barrel to infinite deployer purgatory in the middle of my desert factory in the middle of the desert, I realized I needed more random digital possessions to prove that I am a replacement in accessible mail and create above and beyond. More specifically, at least 1000 music discs, which I will trade with my loyal infinitely wealthy record collector for about 14 inventories of silver coins, so that I can buy any valuables I please from the trade station. But in order to make more money, I will have to spend money in the first place. In order to procure all the music discs, I must concoct this donut-shaped creeper farm that I learned from that I learned from this guy. But instead of roasting the creepers to death, I am going to cut out the killing part of this farm and glue the rest of the design on top of a funnel connected by a long vertical straw to this hole that is being monitored by the infamous skeleton Jonathan Arbuckle. The idea is that creepers shall be born in the donut and will be sucked into a whirlpool leading to a massive fall that damages them enough so that the skeleton can one-shot the creepers. And an iron golem will be placed in this position so that the skeleton will constantly be triggered, which will slay the creepers instead. Further details will be revealed as I go along. Because for now, the cost of the farm was costing a high cost. The national economy of I go by lots of names nation was being upheld by Jonathan Arbuckle killing creepers and the motivational burial farm, which gave enough motivational apples to replace the need to consume rotten flesh. Now that buying rotten flesh from the trade station was unnecessary, I could use my leftover coins to buy preposterous quantities of wood for the music disc farm. While the coins were being consumed by the imaginary voices in the station, I returned to the Jonathan Arbuckle area to lure more creepers into this pit, to be tricked into becoming not alive, leading to an increase in music discs per square mile. This new arrival of discs will be traded once again, this time so I can buy 2000 cobblestone for the disc farm, therefore preventing around 1 hour of inefficient mining gaming. This cobblestone and wood will then be reshaped into the various ornamentation that are also needed, aka slabs and trapdoors to block spiders and these guys from spawning, therefore leaving creepers. Now you might be asking, how will the creepers be lured from the donut into the funnel into Jonathan Arbuckle? According to the tutorial there will be 16 snow organisms that will constantly annoy the creepers, causing them to go into waspishness mode, only for them to trip and fall down these trapdoors into wherever I want them to go. So the snow village from last episode turned out to be useful for something after all. After returning with the snow I basically already had everything I needed. The first order of business is to turn the original skeleton area into this new area 2.0 revamp remaster. Which was done quite easily with a few left clicks and right clicks. This pit will be where the creepers will fall. And this room shall contain the iron golem that will bait the skeleton into shooting the creepers 24 7 365 13.8 billion. Which somehow works with ludicrous amounts of slabs and fences in between these trapped individuals. Now for the creeper funnel, which will have several miniature rivers within it to channel all the creepers towards the inescapable pit. The next step was apparently to build this plus shaped area and a ring area complete with wooden decorations and a bed. This will be the containment zone for the snowmen. But I came to a fatal realization. These snowmen instantly melted due to me building this farm in the middle of a hot dry desert. And I chose to ignore this important fact, so I can continue building my infrastructure. I have accomplished laying down the slabs and trapdoors of the cobblestone donut, which was soon followed by covering everything with scrumptious cobblestone and torches, which was to prevent hostile men from being spawned outside of the farming area. Behold. The music disc farm. Which has a giant antenna on top of it now. Anyways the idea behind this is that I will use the slime sling and elytra to afk for 5 seconds on top of the farm, which will cause multifarious creepers to spawn here due to spawn sphere mechanics or something. After waiting a bit I shall dream high IQ MLG into the hole leading into the farm. And I will become the creeper bait myself to replace the extinct snowman. Simply standing in the snowman area was enough to lure everyone in a 1 mile radius to fall into the funnel. Without any explosions. 
Finally at the bottom, Jonathan Arbuckle was successfully no-scope sniping all the creepers on accident, leading to this miniature storage system being filled with mouth-watering amounts of precious music discs. Selling all of this already rewarded me with half an inventory of advantageous currency and ridiculous amounts of notifications. But it is not yet time to celebrate, because I already had ideas to improve this farm for maximum capitalism. You may have remembered from over one year ago how I built a pillager farm in the non-existent game known as Vanilla Minecraft. I was going to copy the advanced elevator systems and glue it onto this creeper farm, for easier access to the AFK area. This would be a rather simple task, requiring only a tiny bit of soul sand, seaweed, and water. By filling this soul sand straw with water, clogging it with seaweed, and unleashing the seaweed, the soul sand creates an upward Newtonian force of motion all the way to the top. And I added another elevator so I could get onto the donut without having to use this rapidly decaying slime sling. But as I collected more discs, I realized I needed a better collection system than this rather inadequate chest. That was when I remembered the overpowered conveyor belts and funnels of the motivational burial purgatory. They could be used to make a sorting system that was as overpowered as the massive storage system wall from all the mods 3, which won't be recreated here since it was far too expensive in this reality. So here was the plan. I constructed 12 funnels and wooden drawers, one for each music disc in existence. Under the creeper hole there shall be a conveyor belt going at highway speeds powered by yet another water wheel. Then there shall be a row of drawers connected by fuels to the music disc highway. By placing a different type of music disc in each drawer, the discs on the highway will be automatically sorted into whichever drawer matches them. As for gunpowder, it will all be abandoned to despawn here because gunpowder was free on the market anyways. But after solving this problem, yet another problem has occurred which was more like 10 different problems bundled into one outstandingly annoying super problem. Due to me being in a desert and due to the existence of thermal foundation, natural desert blitz could somehow fit in between the wooden decorations, and proceeded to shoot blaze-like fireballs that annoyed everything in existence, including me. What was worse is that creepers seemed to die instantly when entering the hole which is due to entity cramming, caused by the Jonathan Arbuckle not being fast enough at processing these creepers. To make matters worse, the iron golem that made the skeleton shoot was on the verge of becoming non-existent. I would need a massive music disc farm overhaul. And then, I read the comment section of my previous motivational barrel expedition. Some guy by the name of this guy suggested using TNT in the design. How this would work is that TNT be placed between the golem and Jonathan Arbuckle, the creeper hole will be relocated to below the TNT, and lava shall be dumped in front of the skeleton to set their fired arrows on fire, exploding the creepers. After testing this design by using myself as bait, it worked. The game was tricked into thinking the skeleton killed 100 creepers at once, leading to the birth of 100 music discs. This was gaming in its purest form. So I began preparations for the farm renovation. I exchanged the silver coins to obtain golden doubloons to purchase precious blue carbon allot ropes, which I molded into armor with my bare hands. I then blocked everything in the farm to shut it down for now, and dug a new tunnel system under the farm. The TNT-based farm will basically look like cryogenic dilution refrigerator, aka this, with Jonathan Arbuckle being lured towards the far side of the system, with lava in front of him. Which successfully led to success. I then dug the chamber where the creepers will become dead, and made a miniature river to redirect creepers from the original hole into the explosion chamber. Now the next step is to repeatedly get new creepers to spawn using the elevator system. After about three rounds I entered the new farm. And I was devastated when I came to the realization that the farm was getting so tall that creepers were instantly despawning whenever they enter the explosion area. So I had a new idea. I was going to add a valve at the original creeper hole so that all my creepers would stay alive by the time I went down. This will be done by adding a row of pistons connected to this protruding rectangular prism, which will collect all the fallen creepers, all of which will be released into the combustion chamber when the time has come. 
In just a few hours I had converted a creeper farm into an elongated car engine simulator. Now it was time to test this system. After doing a few rounds of getting creepers to spawn, it seemed that the valve was becoming more dense with creepers with each new round. When I eventually became satisfied with the density of creepers in the valve, I released them into the explosion area. But then, disaster struck. Each and every creeper instantly died of fall damage, leaving behind the preposterously useless blitz. This is the saddest day in this current stiliferous era of the universe. I made in one final change, which was a water source to save the creepers so that they could die from explosions instead of fall damage. After doing yet another round of getting creepers to spawn, I was once again plunged into depression when I saw that no creepers showed up. Because they despawned. I had enough. I decided that perhaps the original system was working well enough and that the pursuit of the functioning explosive music disc farm was not worth pursuing. So I had to reverse renovate the farm to what it was approximately 0.2 days ago. This was easily done by shutting off the new farm and bringing in a new skeleton, which will be named Jonathan Arbuckle 2.0. In just a few minutes, it looked like nothing ever happened. And the music disc farm was back to being operational. Now the last thing to do was to amass a quantity of music discs that will last the rest of the playthrough. After what felt like two Milky Way rotations, I have obtained somewhat countable amounts of music discs. Amounting to approximately 1879 music discs. And I will proceed to sell all of them for silver coins, which can apparently be flipped, and also compress them into golden coins for easier storage. The newfound currency will be used to fund my expedition into Phase 3 of Create Above and Beyond. And possibly automate Phase 2 mechanisms, for mass industrialization. More water wheels. More motivational barrels. More whatever this is. More gaming. That will be the plan if there is a next episode. Remember to comment turn off fat blocker like subscribe and like. And shout out to the current channel members even though memberships will be disabled on October 10th.